guys, welcome to the ultimate guide for the Lightning Staff right here on Black Ops 3 Origins as well as Black Ops 2 Origins. Now keep in mind this is the exact same guide that you guys can use for both games. Do not worry, you don't have to look for another guide. This is all the exact same, okay? It doesn't change, same code, same everything, okay? Once you get the code down, you guys will be set for life, okay? You guys will remember it and never forget it. I mean, it's really hard to forget. It's so simple and easy. But uh, before we begin really quickly, I just want to say a very big shout out to my mentor, Crash Power, who has, you know, kindly lent me access to the cheat sheets that he himself created and I can't be thankful enough. Um, again, I think so much so if you guys could please check out his youtube channel and as well as his twitter i will leave a link in the description to both of them so that you guys will actually have full out access to both of them to you know help follow him out and you know subscribe to him uh as he is the best person to go to for origins tutorials i can't say that enough all right now moving on to the tutorial let's get right into it so the first piece that we're actually going to get for the staff is the gramophone disc designated for the lightning tunnel itself this will allow you to teleport to the crazy place via the lightning tunnel now the first possible location could be right here on this chuck wagon on the very back leaning up against the box the second is located right over here between the wonder fizz and jug laying up on that table right there and the third and final possible spawn location for the gramophone disc designated for the lightning staff could be located right over here in the wind tunnel right up against this lamp on this stand right here which is where i found it in my game Moving on, let's get the staff. Now, keep in mind, I recommend using Stamina Up so that you can get all three pieces of your staff by yourself. You're also going to want to have a teammate hold a zombie or two so that you're not getting swamped and, you know, completely wrecked on the tank as it continues its travel path. Uh, you know, because people will not be able to revive you if, you know, you go down on that tank. It's really difficult to get back to it unless you have Stamina Up. Now, keep in mind that you do need 500 points for each ride that you take on the tank. Now, I highly recommend running behind the tank and looking for the markers so that you don't miss the jump. But the reason why I suggest that you run behind the tank is so that the tank will almost instantaneously cool down enough for you guys to take off on the tank again. Now, keep in mind that, you know, if you don't have stamina up, you could possibly and quite potentially lose track of the tank at the same time you're looking around for this one marker. Now, what the marker is, you're looking for an edge of the watchtower, which is coated with barbed wire. So you're only going to see two sides of the watchtower poking out with barbed wire above it. So that's your heads up to double check and jump back on the tank if you see it really close. Now... When it gets close, you're going to wait for the jump spot to be right about here, okay? Do not risk it. So you're going to make your way down that staircase, come over to this footprint right here across the bridge, and simply make your way back. You can also get the wind staff piece from there, but we're not talking about the wind staff. So let's get back into the tutorial, and let's focus right here. Now, the next thing that you absolutely have to do is simply make your way back to generator 2, which is the tank station, and simply hop back on. Now, keep in mind that you or a friend could simply call the tank from both sides of the map by simply going to the back of the generator 2 area, right behind the uh, right behind the tank station, I'm sorry, and look for a little red box and pay 500 points, the exact same amount, and your next ride would be free from each location. Okay, now keep that in mind. Now, you can also stand on this rail, but you can also get knocked off the tank and be knocked under it and kind of get squished by it. So I wouldn't advise standing on there unless you got past the curves of the first turns. Now, the second spot location is right here. You'll see this jetting on the floor, and you can simply run and slide down here and grab your piece. If you have stamina up, this is where it becomes key. On Black Ops 3, do not jump in the mud. Simply run and make your way to the tank and hop back on there by double tapping A and you should get on there every single time. Uh, the reason why is because there is a barrier there and you guys will not be allowed to get on the tank if you don't have stamina up. 
Uh, the third and final spot is located right here. It's the easiest jump. Simply walk onto the pathway or jump on the pathway. I'd recommend jumping just in case you miss it. And there you go. Now moving on to the final piece of the staff that you need in order to build it, you need the crystal. Now you're going to have to place the gramophone down in the lightning tunnel where I do. So just make your way down to the lightning tunnel over by generator 5 and simply make your way all the way down the tunnel and simply place it by pressing the action button over here on the table right next to the portal. Now while the uh, portal is building itself, you simply need to wait, make sure no zombies are around you, but again this is key where a friend is holding the zombie because you can upgrade it and get it ready to go on the pedestal, but I'd recommend holding on to it for the first panzer of the game if you guys are not fully set up. Now once you've grabbed your crystal from the pedestal, you simply need to make your way back to the lightning uh, teleport station and kind of press X to, or square, I should say, to activate the portal again from this side of the crazy place. Now once the portal is built, you simply need to make your way back through it and go all the way back into the excavation site and build it. Now while you're there, I highly suggest you go ahead and flip the turnstiles while you're there. The reason why is because it takes a little bit of a shortcut into upgrading it which you guys will see and understand once you go to upgrade it yourselves. Now, moving on, you simply need to make your way back down to the excavation, as I said, all the way down this time. So as I pass it off to the right there, you should see a table where you can place the gramophone again. It's in between the two gramophone locations. Uh, there's only two gramophone locations, so don't worry about that. Now. Once you build it, you simply need to look for the third pedestal, which is the third one from the left, and the purple one for the lightning staff. Now here you guys will see me going around and flipping the turnstiles at their separate locations. Now the first location is up here by this edge of the staircase. As you guys can tell, it does flip these turnstiles to where they actually change colors. Now the color displayed must be the one for your staff if you are upgrading that staff. Now. Again, simply turn the turnstiles via the command switch, like, you know, just press your, you know, action button on your console, whether it's Xbox, which is X, or PlayStation, which is Square, or PC is E, I believe. Now, now the next step is... I think it might be. Okay, let's not worry about this. Sorry about that. I hope that it did that for a second there. Um, but anyways, the first gramophone disc location could be located right here on the back side going towards generator 6. On the other side. So basically, I'm moving a long way so that I don't get swamped by zombies and I'm not getting attracted uh, to deaths or anything like that. So it could be located right here, leaning up against the middle of the Now, the first location for the gramophone could be located off to the right. worry about what we need. Now, as you guys can see on the screen, this is something provided to me by Craft Power. It's basically a simple method, so uh, I would recommend that you guys pause the video really quick. This is your cheat sheet for you guys. This is exactly how the switches are supposed to look at each of their locations. Now, example generator 5, opposite of the stamina up machine, it should be facing downward. Now the church should be facing off to the right. The church upstairs next to the window should be facing upward. The right of the wind tunnel 
should be facing up as well. The original spawn at stairs, which is at generator 1, should be facing left. And tank station, or generator 2, should be facing downward. Now, behind excavation site, you should be flipping it up. Now, easier way of remembering it is 2 at generator 1, 3 at generator 5, 2 at church, the lower level behind the tank, at the church upstairs window, 2 at the tunnel entrance of the wind tunnel, 2 at spawn, 3 at generator 2, and of course, 3 at the... Now, here's the switch locations, and again, it's pretty simple, we're going to go in order. At this location, you want to flip it twice. Moving on, we're going to locate it right over at generator 2, so you guys actually have a visual to go with it. Now it's going to be at the back entryway located right over here by these boxes. You're going to flip this one three times. Once you've done that, you need to make your way to generator 5. Now completely ignore the one that you see in no man's land before you even ask about it. Yes, it looks the exact same, but you do not have to touch it. It is already pre-flipped to the right position, okay? So never touch that. Now let's move on to generator 5. Now we're going to go to generator 5 and I'm going to show you exactly where this switch is. Now the switch is located right over here on BO3 right next to this gumball machine. Now here on BO2 it's just going to be located in the exact same place but without the gumball machine. Excavation site. It's simply located on the back path going towards generator 6 and the church area. You're going to flip that one three times, and then you're going to make your way over to generator four, right next to the wind tunnel. You guys should find another panel that you have to flip the switch on. Now, if you guys do this pre, you know, doing your staff upgrade, then you guys won't have to worry about it. That's right. You guys can actually do this as a shortcut to prevent you from having to waste your time on upgrading this staff. Now... The final two are again located in the church, so let's make our way there. Alright, so coming up from this path, you're going to make your way off to the right, right behind the tank. Again, this is up against the wall near a shovel location. You can simply flip the switch two times and you are set. I accidentally double flipped, so I reflipped it back to the proper location. Now, moving on to the final switch location and the upgrade process itself. So, I'm going to make my way into here, flipping the switch only one time. It's located at the very back of the church location. So, again, make sure you get there. Now, before we actually show you guys the whole upgrade process, let's make sure that we understand the code for the in chamber puzzle. Now, here is what it should look like. Now, Crash Power was nice enough to lend us this one as well. So, uh, again, thank you. Now, as you guys can tell, you have these tiles. Now, your objective is to play piano with these tiles, okay? So, as you guys can see, the bottom seven are what you need to worry about. You do not need to worry about the top five. If you mess up, it's okay. The keys may continue to play but there's an easy solution you simply need to shoot any three of the top five bars and they will all disappear it won't disappear whenever you know <laughs> you mess up again by leaving one on top of the five you actually have to shoot otherwise the lightning balls that you know you're using to play piano with will be stuck on the top five forever uh, also, I wouldn't recommend upgrading the lightning staff at the same time that you're upgrading three or two other staffs. The reason why is because it can sometimes glitch out and you will have to physically wait until after all the staffs have been upgraded besides the lightning. It is a very long process. Now, the code for this is pretty simple. You're going to be playing three separate notes. Now, the location to the sneak peek preview, as I like to call it. <laughs> Basically, your little hint in the chamber is not really very easily to understand unless you can read notes. However, Crash Power had this 
you know, already had the deciphered version right here for us. So the first set of notes that you need to play is 136. The second set of notes you need to play is 357. And the final and last note that you have to play is 246. Keep in mind you can play these notes at any order, whatever time you'd like, as long as you're upgrading the staff. Now, moving on back up to this piece right here. Let's make sure that you guys see this in action. So, again, here's the final switch being flipped, and now we're making our way back to the lightning tunnel where I had previously left the gramophone. So, I'm making my way there right now. Now that I'm here, I just simply need to make sure that I have ammo in my lightning staff. You can do this on any round, guys. It doesn't really matter, so long as you do it while you have ammo. Now I'm going to come back into the chamber, and I'm simply going to begin playing piano. So here it is. I'm putting in 136, 357, and 246. Now I need to simply make my way out through the portal in the crazy place and simply backtrack up to the excavation site. Now while I'm in the excavation site, I need to make it all the way down to the very bottom where I built the staff to begin with and simply shoot my crystal. Now the crystal is the exact same as, of course, your crystal that you had picked up to even build the staff to begin with. So this is a whole crystal this time instead of a crystal shard. Now, once you've gotten down there and you've shot the orb at least one time, you should notice that it will absolutely go bananas, all right? What, but what I mean by bananas, guys, is that it's going to charge up. It's going to look the exact same color as your staff to begin with. But after you shoot it, like you see me do right about here, you'll see that it kind of casts off electric glow and stuff, and it looks like lightning bolts are shooting out of it. And then you'll hear a sound like, Bah! Okay, now once you've heard that sound, you guys can run up there and look, and your orb should be disappearing. You guys just barely caught the end of it. Now, moving on, let's take a little quick preview of it. Here it is. You simply need to make your way back to the crazy place, and this time your pedestal should raise up, and you can place in the full staff. Now, once you've placed in the full staff, you need about 15, 20 zombie kills at max, in order to upgrade the staff fully. Now once you've gotten the staff fully upgraded, it does some amazing things. It performs chain attacks, uh, basically meaning that the, not even the charge shot, that's right, you do get a charge shot and you also get one other item that I'll discuss in here in a second. But anyways, the link attack is basically, it will ping from zombie to zombie that is within a small group or a very large group, and it will eliminate that group fast. So there's no getting stuck indoors, there's nothing that can stop you at that point. Now, it does start to lose power at some point, but sometime this week I should have a tutorial on how you guys can increase the damage of your staff, not just with uh, double tap or anything like that, but it will be a full guide on how you guys can do that later on. Uh, it should be coming out either tomorrow or the day after because I still have to finish editing the tutorials for the ice, wind, and fire staff. I'm still finishing the editing process on those as well. So that's why my throat's a little dry and going bananas as you can hear. But anyways, the second thing that you guys get as the staff is fully charged is the charge shot. Now the charge shot shoots up to about six rounds of ammunition in the staff and it creates a little ball of electricity that gathers up on the floor or wherever you shoot it and it simply goes 
haywire all over the zombies, meaning that you can kill massive amounts of hordes with this, even in the high rounds, okay? You get yourself some double tap, you guys are pretty much set. Now, the third thing that you get is an attachment to your staff, which you can simply pull out by pressing left on your uh, D-pad. Once you have pressed it, you're going to pull out something called Sekhmet's Vigor. You only get three shots in this, okay? So you have to be very careful about how you're shooting it, how you're using it, everything, okay? The reason why is because that revives your allies, okay? So if you have a downed ally and you just want to quickly run by and quickly, you know, revive them without going down, you can use Sekhmet's Vigor or the Maxis Drone and simply revive your teammate. Now... This is pretty much a demonstration of the charge shot. Okay, there's me using the single shot. So, I'm going to be building the teleporter. I'm pretty much done here. My friend's staff's done. Uh, we're just doing goofing off mode. You know, we're, we're playing the game, doing everything that we need to. So, there's a charge shot, and that is pretty much it. Overall, I hope you guys have enjoyed this guide and found it very helpful. If it did help you in any way, shape, or form, I'd appreciate it if you dropped the video a thumbs up or even, you know, subscribe to my channel as we do daily live streams and daily zombies content. Now, again, there will be a link in the description to my mentor's channel, Crash Power, uh, or you can simply type in Crash Power on the YouTube search bar and simply locate them that way. But to make it so much easier, I will leave a link to the, the description, <laughs> not the description, I'm sorry. But in the link, I will leave... Uh, <laughs> I need to nap after recording this all day. This is what I've been going at. Uh, but again, apologies about that. But enough is enough. Uh, basically, I will be leaving a link in the description so that you guys can easily access his channel and subscribe to him. Uh, if you did, it would be greatly appreciated. He does have the best Origins quality content uh, that you guys would probably love better than mine. And um, he can go through all the information more thoroughly than I possibly can. Also, there will be some neat information that he has also shared with me in the description. And of course, this has been your girl, Team Corey, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.